Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to cover off Phantom tokenomics. Now, you know, the excitement for Phantom is really starting to build up and it's gathering a lot of attention, not just from people speculating on the price, but also use cases and adoption too. But what I want to focus on today is the tokenomics. Anybody who's invested in a project for a long time really needs to understand the tokenomics of the project as this could make or break a project. We've seen many a great project pumped and dumped on. We've seen many a great project fail because of the miss aligned incentives in terms of game theory and the way the incentives work on their tokenomics. So that's why I wanted to spend some time looking at the tokenomics of Phantom together with you. So let's take a quick look. So the first thing to understand is why are tokenomics important? Well, let's say we're just in interested in price, right? Everybody wants to make a quick buck. They're interested in the price. They want the price to go up because they've bought at a certain price and they want to sell at a certain price, right? That's what all traders, all investors want to do. Great. Well, the common fallacy, which I try to address time and time again, is we need to be focused as investors on market cap, okay? So market cap is defined as supply times price. And the number of beginners I see mistaken this is crazy. So for, so let's say you take an average, uh, a new investor in the crypto space, they go, oh, Cardano is only trading at $2 when Ethereum's at 3,700, right? Why can't Cardano get to 3,700? That is what I mean by understanding market cap and total and tokenomics, okay? Because your market cap is simply your supply, the amount of tokens available multiplied by the price. So it's the market cap you want to compare. It's fair for you to say, why can't Cardano, Cardano's market cap reach Ethereum's market cap, right? Ethereum's at, let's say, 400 billion. Cardano's at about 70 billion market cap. Why can't Cardano catch up with that? But you can't say, why can, why can the $2 Cardano price not reach the Ethereum $3,700 price, right? So we need to get our heads around that first. So market cap is your supply multiplied by your price. Now, let's use this for Phantom, right? For Phantom, we know there's 2.55 billion, uh, let's remove this M, 2.55 billion supply, yeah? And the price is $2.19 at the moment. So if you multiply them, you get the market cap of $5.56 billion in market cap on Phantom. Now, this 5.5 billion price, you can now compare to other projects similar to Phantom to get an idea of how does it do. And then you can tie that back to price in order to get an idea how high can your Phantom go. And I get this all the time. Can Phantom reach $10? Can Phantom reach $100? Can Phantom reach $50, right? Well, here we go. Let's take a look at this. Uh, let's move this over a little bit so we can see it. There we go. So what I've done here is I've done a little exercise to say, okay, what price multiple can Phantom do, right? At 1x, which is what Phantom's currently at, $2.19, that's a 5.56 billion, again, excuse my M's, lazy there, 5.56 billion market cap for Phantom, okay? Now, you know, the common question is, can it 10x? For it to 10x, in other words, for the price to be $21.90, which again, a lot of people are focused on, right? If they bought at this price and they want to, to get to here, that would imply a market cap of 55.6 billion, okay? 55.6 billion market cap for Phantom. If Phantom wanted to 50x, in other words, if we wanted to get to $109 price, Phantom's market cap would need to be 278 billion, okay? Now, for the lows, I've added in a few more, and I'm going to explain to you why this is, uh, uh, why this becomes uh, particularly difficult. Bear with me, let me move me out of the way. So what I've done is I've said, if Phantom was to 100x, right? Because a lot of people, again, will say, why can't Phantom get to $200, right? Surely that's not unreasonable. That would mean Phantom's at a 556 billion, and then finally, for it to a thousand X, right, to get to 2,190, Phantom would have to sit at 5.56 trillion in market cap. Okay, now, now, now's the time to put some perspective on this. So at 1X, this is where we're at. A thousand X, that would imply that Phantom is over five times the market cap of Bitcoin. OK, so you can see the people who are saying to you, you know, Phantom can get to two thousand dollars. 
they believe Phantom can be five times the current market cap of Bitcoin. That's why I say this one's for the lows, okay? So that one is far-fetched, right? There's nothing to suggest that we can get there. That's a leap of gigantuan, leap of faith of massive proportions, right? That's out of there. Now, this one you can kind of get to grips with. So this one is saying... For 100x on Phantom, we'd have a $219 Phantom price, which would win, which would mean a $556 billion market cap. Now, to put that into perspective, Ethereum's trading at $438 billion. So this is saying that Phantom would need to be about 20% above the market cap that Ethereum is currently at. OK, so you can see we've got a long way to go before we get to there. If you look at any metric, whether it's total value locked, whether it's usage statistics, whether it's the, the dApps being built on the ecosystem, Phantom's headed in the right direction. I've covered that a lot, but we can't say that it's on Ethereum's level just yet. But what we can argue is the total market's growing. Ethereum's market cap, you know, people are citing Ethereum to do a 3x or 4x. And therefore, if this Ethereum becomes a, a trillion dollar market cap, then there's an argument that Phantom and other good layer one solutions could easily get to half a billion. OK, so that's how we make sense of that one. Now, let's look at this 10x. How, how realistic is a 10x? Well, a 10x is saying we'd get to 55.6 billion in market cap. OK, now to put that into perspective, Cardano, which is another layer one blockchain, which arguably, particularly before the Alonzo hard fork, which has only just happened, and definitely now, has Phantom has more use cases than Cardano. And I'm a big fan of Cardano. I've held a, a, a big bag of Cardano for a long period. I still continue to believe in that project. But I'm just using, I'm just trying to be subjective. Phantom, you can argue, has more total value locked and more usage right now in terms of DeFi than Cardano, right? Although we know where Cardano is going in terms of their roadmap, we believe in the project, it's a great community, very loyal, I get that, etc., which is what Phantom currently doesn't have. So to argue that, you know, we couldn't get to 55.6 billion, which is still quite far off Cardano's current market cap. And keep in mind, this is at Cardano trading at $2.14. When Cardano was at $3, when it went past that figure, this market cap was far higher, right? It was closer to uh, 90 right? 90 to 100 billion when it was pumping up. So for the, for us to argue that Phantom couldn't reach half of that, you know, that's a, that's a bullish case. We could do that. That's realistic. So then we get to this kind of 50 level and the 50 mark is saying we need a 278 billion uh, market cap. And again, you can argue that this is a, this is a realistic target to aim for longer term. This is not something that's going to happen in months or even one year. Well, you should be careful saying that in crypto, a lot can happen in one year, but it's not going to happen over the next few months, right? For Phantom to reach 278 billion, that would imply it's four uh, X where Cardano is at now in terms of market cap. It would argue that it's about three and a half X what Binance coin is right now in terms of market cap. That doesn't mean it's not possible, but we need to be realistic with our timeframes, right? So if the whole market goes up, Bitcoin gets to, I mean, let's argue Bitcoin gets to 150 to 180, let's call it to keep the numbers easy. That would mean Bitcoin's at about a three trillion market cap. And at that point, why is it unrealistic for a coin like Phantom, which is a great layer one solution with at that point, maybe loads of use cases and uh, loads of DeFi usage, a lot of total value locked? Probably not, you know, difficult for that to be a quarter of a trillion. If Bitcoin's trading at three trillion, Ethereum's trading at, you know, one trillion kind of mark, then we start getting a bit more, uh, these cases become a bit more uh, achievable, a bit more realistic. So that's one thing I wanted to spend some time on. Now, the next thing we need to go is, okay, how conducive are the tech tokenomics for us to do this? Are they going to be a hindrance or are they going to be a tailwind and really help us? Well, the first thing to note is something called circulating supply. Let me move me back to where I belong. There we go. First thing to notice is circulating supply. So currently 2.55 billion phantom tokens are circulating. In the white paper, we know that the max supply minted at the day when the project started back in 18, 2018, was 3.175 billion phantom tokens. That means we have something called 80% circulating supply. OK, very important to understand this. If you have a coin with a very, um, very high price, but then suddenly uh, you notice that a lot of the supply is not circulating. In other words, there's still more to be dumped onto the market. 
then that is going to have a downward pressure on your price. Okay, if you suddenly make more coins available, you increase the supply, the price is going to go down. So it's good that Phantom is already 80% circulating. It means that, you know, there's no massive 50, 60, 70% that could suddenly be dumped and the price take a hit. So this is very robust and this is a very good figure, figure for us to see. And this is growing nicely and getting towards 3.175 in a nice steady way, which isn't hindering the price. Now, the next thing for us to look at is the total token distribution. So of all the tokens minted, how were they distributed, right? Because we know again of many projects where the coins get pumped and dumped. In other words, we notice one or two wallets which hold about 50-60% of the supply of coins and that is a red flag. That is very dangerous for a coin which you want to invest in for the long term because there's something called a rug pull, a pump and dump. These kind of things happen where the price is manipulated up and then the people who own all of this money in this wallet can dump it, sell it this higher price and the price will never recover uh, due to the bad tokenomics. So that's why this is something you always want to look at. And we can see with Phantom, we have a really, again, robust set of tokenomics here, a nicely split even um, distribution of the token. So initially, back in Feb, March of 2018, 3.51% was made available in the seed cell. OK, and they were able to buy at one point six cent a phantom. Keep in mind, the price is two dollars nineteen now. So just a couple of just a year and a half, uh, two years ago, uh, two, well, three years almost now. They then was a private token sale for thirty seven percent where the private the private people who were able to get into this round were buying at three point one cents and three point five cents through April to June 2018. And then just one point five seven percent was made available at four cents to the public. 7.49% was made available to the team, which you can see. You can also then see you've got a token reserve for 6%. Advisors have got 12% in the blue here. And then you've got block rewards of 32.8%. So that's how the coins were distributed. Okay. Now, this is particularly good, right? So you've got the team sat there with 7.49%. Advisors will have 12%. No single party here has massive amounts of funds. Bear in mind, the private is split by different private institutions or whoever was interested in the round and purchased at the time. So there's no one wallet sat here with 65 70% of the phantom supply. So this is a good, robust set of tokenomics and nothing massively alarming here. Now, the next thing you want to look at is your token release schedule. OK, this is really important because, again, how the tokens are released over time can have an impact on the bullish momentum of any token price. If you imagine, again, going back to our formula of market cap is equal to supply times price. If every time the, the coin is gaining some traction, if you, if you imagine our technical analysis charts, anytime we're getting some bullish momentum and the price is pushing up, the supply keeps increasing, that's going to push the price down. OK, um, and that's going to be the concern here is it well, for any coin is if you have uh, an issue where the uh, the liquid supply is being increased very often that can stop any bullish momentum for a coin stop it from building good momentum now the good news here with phantom is we're seeing a good schedule here which the team has planned out and you can see again if i move me out the way you can see that it'll take you to the end of 2023 before we have 100% circulating supply of the 3.175 billion. So this is really good. You can see the pink line was the seed cell. So this was originally made available and that's not changing, okay? That's flat. You then had your private cell, which we mentioned, stays flat. Private cell round two stays flat. Public cell, complete, okay? You then had your team who gets theirs slightly and you can see it doesn't really ramp up anymore. So we're here in 21. That's going to be flat, so that's not going to change. You then have your advisors. They've got their 12%. That's going to remain flat, okay? Then you've got your token reserve. That's going to stay flat. So the only element which is going to change now over time are the block rewards, okay? Which is, again, something we want to incentivize the network, to incentivize people uh, to, to run nodes, right? And you can see that does increase aggressively, but it gets us to an end by 2024. So looking at the long-term horizon for Phantom, the tokenomics are very robust, and we can almost see this, this weight lifting off of Phantom by the end of 2024. Because remember, any token which is still going through its release schedule is going to have a natural downward pressure on the price, right? Look at those block rewards coming through. This is naturally going to have a downwards pressure on the price as and when more supply is being released on the market. Every time you're, the, the bulls are trying to push the price up, bulls made available on the market. So it's good to see that after 2024, I wouldn't be surprised if Phantom goes from strength to strength and really starts 
moving on from here. So there you have it, guys. That is a breakdown of the Phantom tokenomics. Overall, it's a really good set of tokenomics and nothing majorly alarming in terms of this project. And that, I think that's the charm of Phantom. When you look at this, you've got a project that dates back to um, June 2018, if not earlier, where the team, a good founding team, got together. They've built a good, uh, robust blockchain with great incentives, good tokenomics. They've got a good founding team. And now they've gone from strength to strength, right? They've, they've really created amazing use cases. Their total value locked in terms of DeFi is amazing. And now they're really starting to build that community as well. So from a fundamental perspective, looking at all the great things that Phantoms managed to do, um, they really are in a good position to go from strength to strength. I mean, looking at the price action, you can see at ready, you're sitting at $2.19. I, I've predicted from my technical analysis, at least a $3 target very shortly, but I have much higher targets for my own personal price targets of where I think phantom can go i mean we've done separate videos on you know spooky swap scream finance tomb finance all of the great projects that are being built on phantom right now i mean you can go and look at the amount of total uh, value locked and you can see fundamentally that phantom is undervalued and i think that's why we're starting to see you know people start talking about phantom now you can see we were talking about it here on this channel for a long time but people are now starting to wake up to phantom they're seeing it's undervalued they're seeing the amount of total value locked in the system and the use cases and going hang on a second this is not being traded at the same earnings multiple, right? Total value locked multiple as an Ethereum. And when you look at that, then that's your untapped potential. That's the price that hasn't been tapped. Now, like always, please be aware of any, you know, short-term catalysts, such as, for example, next week, you've got the Phantom Developers Conference in Abu Dhabi. Naturally, that can cause short-term fluctuations. So whenever you're looking at these types of coins for long-term hold, you have to have conviction. You have to be ready for the volatile nature of crypto. It can be, be at $2.19 today. It can be at, you know, 80 cents tomorrow. And you've got to be prepared for that. And your conviction's got to put you in a place where you go, hang on, this is a bargain. I'm going to buy the dip as opposed to be worried uh, in this situation. There you go, guys. If you like the breakdown of the tokenomics of Phantom, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want me to do a tokenomics analysis of any other of your favorite coins, please comment them below and I can get to work on that. As always, if you like my perspective, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.